The world, to my young eyes, was one long open highway that went on forever, and we would fly through all the towns and countryside in chariots of steel top down, the wind we built of speed blowing through our tangled hair. Gas and lives were cheap to burn. Our dollars stretched so far, time was inexhaustible, and we were immortal. Running low on gas was not a problem. America was a land of intersections, and on every corner were gas stations, diners, hot dog stands. Dads went to work and moms stayed home. And slowly clocks ticked down school hours till kids would hear the bell at three o'clock that spilled them out into the streets to make their way through backyards, shortcuts over fences, dodging neighbors' dogs, reaching home by any route other than the safe sidewalks, touching base just long enough with mom to say, I'm home and then back out to play until called home again by moms to have their suppers. As teens, we'd hang out at the soda fountain after school, sipping Cokes and eating fries and looking long into each other's eyes. At supper time, our dads would ask us, how was school? But minds were far from school. That much was still the same as with our younger brothers and sisters. Why think about where we would have to go again tomorrow? So answers were perfunctory unless we were dragged in our thoughts back to that state of mind we had blocked out. Sometimes okay was good enough. We always hoped Dad would move on to a dialogue with Mom. Best was having keys to the car. Hard to get and often came with many tough conditions best behavior, no school problems. Seemed like ages till we scrounged together money from work done both after school and over all those long hot summers, enough to get wheels of our own. But then the world was opened and expanded outward far as we could drive and get back home again by nightfall, that one long open highway. Life is different now and certainly not better. One phrase says it all, lowered expectations. Everything costs more and we've got less. Takes two jobs and sometimes more to raise a family. And good luck to the kid trying to save up to buy a car. Time was a slow molasses, sweet and syrupy. Weekends were a respite long awaited, never long enough. Thank God for holidays that stretched them out another day and made for short school weeks that ended sooner. Neighborhoods expanded street by street as we grew older and more bold, familiar. We were schooled before we went to school in ways we did not know but accepted. Alternate universes were beyond our young imaginations. Boys played with boys. Boys games. Tomboys joined in, sometimes better, picked first when we would choose up sides. But boys who wanted girlish things shut down to the world, often to themselves. That September, I turned 10 with all of fall and my first wheels, two bright red, a Schwinn. Until snowfall, I now would ride to school. Saved allowance, soon allowed two baskets side by side and back to hold my books. And other times, whatever I would take along on my excursions outside beyond the streets of town, no longer constrained among pedestrians. Now, spiraling outward, soaring over country roads past farmers, fields, and woodlands. School days, I could dawdle longer over breakfast now. Only minutes I'd ride, then throw down my bike alongside those of others in the yard and be inside in class before the bell that signaled school had now begun. Small town innocence. No bikes were locked. Theft. It never crossed our minds. At that tender age, we did not feel confined, constrained by our small town ways. There was a freedom 
in our innocence. We knew our bikes would still be there when school got out, and we would ride them home. That's as far as I've gotten with that. <laughs>